Since I've been in impersonation mode lately, see my last video, I'm going to pull a John Heiss from I Build It, link to his channel below, and get right into the build. So my wife recently moved into a new office and she asked me to build her a ladder shelf so she could display copious amounts of pictures of me. And well I guess of our daughter too, but mainly me because she loves me so much. So out in the shop, I started by digging out the last remaining bit of this old oak wood that my brother-in-law Scott gave me a few years back. I still have a few pieces left over from the last video, the coffee table build, which you can see on my channel. So I grabbed what I had left and started the milling process. This stuff is five quarter red oak and it's really dense. So I'm trying to take it down to somewhere between three quarters of an inch and an inch. So there's a lot of milling to do and because I went into detail about the milling process in the last video, I won't spend as much time here explaining the process as much as I did in that last video. And because I only have six inches of capacity on my jointer, That's what she said. <laughs> I had to once again incorporate the melamine skid and hot glue technique to flatten one side before flipping the piece over and running them through the planer. And as in the last video, I started out with the planer on the ground and finally realized that, you know what, that's for the birds. <laughs> So I got smart, put the planer on top of the washers, uh, game board spread across these two saw horses, and this was way better than me bending over repeatedly, trying to run these long boards through the planer multiple times. Once I got everything milled up, I proceeded to gluing up all four panels. There will be four shelves in the unit, and they get increasingly bigger as you go down. So the top shelf is six inches, and then going down, they are nine, 12, and 15 inches all the way at the bottom. Once the glue was dry on the panels, I started by cleaning up the glue and then rejointing one side to get ready to cut them down to final size on the table saw. Once they were square, I jumped over to the table saw and started ripping them down to final dimension. So I got all four panels ripped down. And I thought I had all four legs ripped down too, but then decided they were just a little too thick at about an inch and a quarter. So instead of planing them down for forever again, I just used a deep cut on the table saw to take that extra quarter inch of thickness off. And all of those deep cuts created a freaking mess. Even with dust collection. Maybe I should try out the overhead dust collection. Hmm, I've never even unpackaged it. So then once I had the panels ripped down to final size, I needed to cut them to final length, which was 30 inches for all four shelves. Here I am measuring the back lip that will get mounted to the back of each shelf, which you'll see here in a minute. Then I took the side lip of each shelf and put a small rounded profile on the end using a large fender washer. 
that coincidentally enough goes with the washer boards that are now housing my planer on the sawhorses. This was my first attempt at sanding down to that rounded profile using a poor man's or poor person's oscillating sander. And I quickly realized that this was also for the birds and it's going to take forever. So I took a break from that nonsense and I uh, headed up to the orange store to grab myself a brand spanking new oscillating sander. Pro tip, the beauty of building furniture for your spouse is that when you have to buy a new tool to get it finished, you have to buy a new tool. And uh, since the furniture is for her or them, yeah, she'll be cool with it, right? But seriously though, she's never given me any kind of hassle about buying tools, which is another reason why I love her. And I was actually surprised at how freaking ridiculous it was to get this stupid machine out of the box. It's pretty squirrely, but totally worth it though once I finally got it out of the box. So I got it unpacked, set up, and then proceeded to sand down all eight of the side lips, two for all four shelves. Then I sanded all of the parts down to two, or up to 220 to get ready for Rubio after assembly. It's way easier to sand all the parts while they can all lay flat on your workbench instead of having to sand after the shelf is assembled. Once everything was sanded, I started to assemble the shelves by gluing on the back of the side lips on each shelf. I used a 23 gauge pin nailer to hold the lips in place until I could get clamps on each of them while the glue dried. So while the shelves were drying, I started to work on the legs. And this meant taking the front two legs and putting the angle on them so they would lean back in final assembly. And the angle's arbitrary, it's just a 10 degree angle and I just used my stock miter gauge to cut the angle on the table saw. The next step on the legs was to start cutting in the half laps where the top bracket would hold both legs in place at the top of the shelf and then the dados in each set of completed legs that would ultimately receive each shelf. I simply referenced the angle on the fence of the table saw while using these hold downs in the T-tracks on my crosscut sled to set up a block to cut the half laps consistently. I used some test pieces that I cut half laps into to set the depth of the blade. Then I ran each leg through one cut at a time using the normal combo blade and the saw. And it's a flat tooth grind blade, so the half laps came out pretty good. It just took a little while longer to make than if I had used a dado stack. Those half laps came out pretty good, if I do say so myself. And I do say that. Or I, I did say that. Do or did and either way they look good they look good all right so once again i decided using the combo blade was also for the birds and decided to go ahead and switch over to my dado stack after getting it all dialed in on the blade height and again that joint looks great to me I continued to cut the half laps for the top bracket on the other set of legs. And at the end of that day, I glued the top brackets to the top of each set of legs and let them dry overnight. Here I took both sets of legs and attached a temporary piece to the bottom using painter's tape and CA glue. That's just to keep the legs in the correct position so I could cut the shelf dados in each set and the legs wouldn't move around on me and throw off the dados down the line.
Then I use my dado sled to cut the dados in each set of legs to receive the shelves. I proceeded to sneak up on this line and once I got it close I would check each shelf for fit. This one needed a hair more taken off. Ah, perfect fit. And then I just went ahead and cut the dados for all four shelves in the exact same way, making sure to check the cut with the actual shelf that was going to go in that dado each time. Once all the dados were cut, all that was left to do was to glue it up, which took a little bit longer than I would have liked since I only have two of these four foot parallel clamps and no bar clamps yet, but I may do with what I had on this one. All right, so once everything was dry, I laid the shelf on its side so I could cut off the part of the top bracket that I had left long in order to kind of make that half lap cut safely. Admittedly, I should have done this before assembly, so I could have used the new oscillating sander to clean up the rounded cuts, but eh, you know, you live and learn. And then I put a chamfer on the bottom of all four legs to make sure they don't get damaged from, you know, moving them around in the future. Which is another task better completed before final assembly by using a router table. And after the chamfer, I finished with Rubio, Monocoat again, and Cotton White, and that was it. Here's the final product, and I think it turned out great. And more importantly, so does my wife. She loved it. She already has it set up in her new office. And I do wish I would have actually gotten more video of it once it was set up in the office. But my wife was able to take a few videos on her cell phone and send them to me, which you'll see here in just a second. But even though you're just seeing the quote unquote glamour shots and the beauty of my darkly lit garage, I still think it turned out pretty dang good. And, uh, oh yeah, all the pictures of me, they're coming. They're there, they're just not up there yet. Oh yeah, and while we're enjoying these beauty shots, let me know what you do and don't like about the videos down in the comments below, whether you like the music, whether you don't like the music, whatever else you might want to see different. If you want to see some more bad acting, we can always make that work as well. All right, so thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends because, you know, sharing is caring.